That's right. You saw the thumbnail. You saw what's coming at you. It's a vortex of all of your money leaving you. What are you going to do? Magic the Gathering is a money pit. Let's talk about it. It's coming up next. Hey guys, welcome back. MTG Moxman here. Hope you guys are having an awesome day and you found me on this amazing day. Where are we at? Thursday? Not bad. April 1st. Welcome aboard to all my new patrons who signed up in the last couple of days. We're almost at 100 patrons, guys. It's amazing. So hopefully, I mean, we're like six off. So hopefully we get to our, our 100 patrons soon, which would be kind of cool as well. Um, now, as you guys know, today's conversation looked kind of cool in that thumbnail, didn't it? You see that big swirling vortex getting sucked down the whirlpool of money. And you got to make sure you can avoid the money pit that can become your magic life. That is a whole series of conversations that I will try to bring into one central conversation with you guys about how I have avoided, been sucked into it a few times, and managed to climb myself back out. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, um, I've been at magic a long time, okay, a long time. Uh, but I am generally a hoarder of magic. I've kept my stuff. I haven't had to sell it all off. And the things I have sold, I managed to buy back when prices were not too high. And I had a full-time job and could afford to buy the things I wanted. Now, there are many people in my life who said I was wasting my time and wasting my money. For those people who have told you those things, you can say the same thing about buying a deck of cards. I can say the same thing if you buy a pop. I can get water from my tap for free. Why are you spending a dollar on that pop? I don't eat out. Why are you guys eating out? Sorry, I eat out once a month. But why are you guys eating out? That's a waste of money. That could be money put towards your, your mortgage. That could, because it's the joy of life. It's the things we enjoy doing and having fun doing. For some of us, collecting binders full of magic is our entertainment. For some of us, the thrill of getting a new card is the best thing ever. For some of us, it's the only thing. And that's cool. Because everyone's got their own things to do. The things they enjoy and don't enjoy. You know, for some people, going to a movie on a Friday night is awesome. I like going to the movies, but the odd time, I like getting together with some friends, busting out a box by just splitting the bill six ways. And doing our own pre-release. Doing our own, you know, breakdown and have a draft night. Like, it's fun to do. And I, I get it. Everyone's got those different perspectives. But today's topic is not about what you find or don't find the best. It's about avoiding the money pit of magic. Making sure you don't get trapped into a hole where you're spending every dollar you have. Putting yourself in debt. Getting sucked in. Now, I've told you guys before. You gotta have a budget. Look, look me in the eye. Gotta have a budget, okay? You don't, unless you're a rich person, you can't just go spending on magic cards as much as you want. I've had lots of hobbies and habits in my life. I collected D and D books. I collected little metal miniatures. I collect a lot of toys, okay? And each one has come with goods and pitfalls. Magic has been the most consistent of those, where I haven't really had too many pitfalls. I made a few errors when I was really young, but not really as an adult. But I've made sure. Never to spend more than I can afford to spend. Not once. I have not fallen down that money pit that hard, ever. I I've kind of cussed the outside like you're seeing in the picture. Ah! Holding on. Hoping my next paycheck will bail me out. Right? But at the same time, I've made sacrifices to get where I am to stay above that money pit line. I've had conversations with my wife. She understands the benefits and the cons of this game. I have made sure she's on the same page as me and knows I will not spend any money that is toward the family and the money actually what I used to do was only what I sold would I put back into magic. But that got a little a little out of whack when I started a YouTube channel. Then I started spending more money trying to get my channel started. For those of you who were here in the early days, I was I was cusping this pit really hard even last year where I overspent on too many products, my channel didn't have enough traction, I didn't have enough patron money coming in, I didn't have any um, YouTube money coming in, and I was I was sinking pretty hard. But I didn't fall all the way down. I, I was like hanging on with a couple of fingers. And I managed to get myself out by sacrificing again, working an extra job, getting some stuff done, and some of you wonder how I find time to do all this. This is fun. My 12-hour day job and the air part-time jobs I do, that's work. And yeah, it, it takes a lot of my time to do it, but this is the fun part. I like talking magic with people, and I'm not going to fall down that pit. And I don't want you guys to fall down the pit of magic either. I want you to enjoy it and stay within a budget, and think about it before you buy things. 
I've had some people ask me lately um, on the collections, right? Should I sell this? Should I sell that? Everything, you know, I don't know your financial situations out there. You're talking to a guy living in a basement here, talking magic cards with no financial, like I am not a financial advisor. I didn't, I didn't graduate MTGU, right? I don't have a degree in my back that says I'm a financial advisor to you guys. This is an entertainment channel. I'm just here to entertain you and talk about the stuff I've done or things that I, I'd like to do. And for you, those of you out there, when somebody says they can afford to spend, you know, the email I got, somebody wants to spend $100,000, that's a lot of money. That's a little out of my realm. I will offer the best advice I can. But I always will start things off. You'll see it in my emails, guys. You've seen it in my videos. Are you in budget? Is this money you can afford to lose and never get back? Because if that's not the case, don't do it. Don't fall down the trap hole, man. Because if you go into that deep, dark pit I'm looking at on my screen, ooh, it's a deep one and it can suck you down and do damage to your family, your relationships, friends, everything. Everything in moderation is how I've done it. I know this may not look like moderation, but I've had to hold back a lot of times and I've hit up on deals. You saw me at Christmas, guys. Six boxes for 600 bucks. That's a good deal. They had some Christmas deals. I try to save for that stuff. d and is going to like kill me this year, I know, because I am cracking a lot of that d and I don't care. If it has any of the cards I like, I'm cracking it. I want to open them for myself. And if there's a drist in there, I will keep opening until I get a drist. And that's a bad thing to say. I know. But I'm preparing for it. I'm working the extra. I'm making sure we're going to hustle and get this stuff done. It's, it, it's just the way it's going to be. And I want you guys to feel the same way. I want you guys to know that I'm with you in this. We're going to have a good time. But don't fall down that trap door of going beyond your means ever. After you go through... And you climb out, you think, I can go down that hole again. No, it gets a little worse each time. You need to avoid falling down the hole that is magic that sucks all your money. You want to take some. I mean, it's a long game. I've been at this a long time. I was buying boxes when they were like 60, 70 bucks at a store, let alone, you know, what they are now. You guys, I mean, my price memory is horrible for new boxes because I don't think they should cost that. We still have taxes from the U.S. that get on cards when they come in. So we're still paying 25, 30% higher than the US who are paying like 79, 80, 100 bucks. We're paying like 140, 160, 180. So hopefully one day that tariff will be gone and we can get back to like some regular magic where I can like just enjoy cracking boxes all the time. I remember those days, but I'm not going to fall down that pit. I'm not going down that rabbit hole where I can't get myself out. I will always pull myself out way before that happens now. Um, because last year reminded me of how bad it can be. And I've tried really hard to say, no, no, we're going to hold off. And if you guys ever have questions about this, concerns, you can always ask me. I'll be there to help you out and answer your questions. But like, you know, buying your collection, uh, I am not Rudy at Alpha Investments. This this is MTG Mox, man. Uh, a regular dude who works a regular job. And, and, and until I hit like 100,000 subscribers, there's no way I can quit my job. There's no way. I've got to multitask every day. I've got to hustle to make everything happen the right way. To buy the magic cards I want and provide for the family. And that's okay because I enjoy doing this. And the job's a fun job to do. So I like my job, which is awesome. But remember the core of the conversation. I keep bringing it back there. The money pit. Okay. Whatever source of entertainment is your entertainment, be it magic, whatever vice is your personal vice you like to do, keep it in budget. Never go over, okay? Magic for me is my vice. I like playing it. I like hanging out, doing it. I don't even care if I lose. I don't care. I like to play. You've seen some people who are like, oh, I don't play serious, serious conversation decks. I play for fun. I just play to see if I can kick off an awesome combo. If I want to build a kill deck for a tournament... I'll play a pre-release. I'll try to win pre-releases. But when I play with friends at a kitchen table, ah, I like there's cards I like to use, so they're always in my decks. They're always there because that's what I like to do. Okay? And I stick to that. You don't have to spend, you do not have to spend a lot of money to enjoy magic. Okay? You don't. You you can get commons on commons. You can build popper decks. We used to play something called Slush where you just take a handful of cards. Everyone brings like 50 cards. Not my land doesn't count. And you put these 50 cards in a pile, they all get mixed around, and everyone just drafts from the pile and takes one at each time until they're all gone. And you gotta build a deck with what you get. It was hilarious. But that's what you do when you're poor. Or when you're in a budget and you can't spend over that budget. And you're trying to save. Like, remember, when you're buying packs, you're buying a lottery. You're buying a lottery of cards. When you're when you're after a specific card you need, 
a lot of value there, right? Because you're just after that one card. I don't have to crack 50 packs hoping to get that card. Uh, that'd be like 100 bucks. I can just go buy that card for 20 bucks. And then you're done. You're cool. And it's like not a problem. So remember, guys, stick to it. Remember not to fall down the rabbit hole. Remember to stay in budget because it's a lot of fun to play this game. And sometimes it can get out of whack when you're not paying attention. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in today. This is MTG Mox, man. Do not fall down that whirlpool. Dig yourselves out. Hey guys, big shout out to all my patrons, young and old, new and fresh. Welcome aboard to the channel. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. This is MTG Mox, man. You guys are amazing. Looking forward to a brand new month of fun and shenanigans. Let's have a good one, guys.